Welcome to Early Reads. Today we're going to read Mr. Bump by Roger Hargraves. This is the sad story of Mr. Bump. The trouble was that Mr. Bump just could not help having little accidents. If there was something for Mr. Bump to bump into, he would bump into it, all right. For instance, if you were to see Mr. Bump out walking down a street in your town, and if there happened to be something to bump into down the street, then you know what would happen, don't you? Bump! Mr. Bump was just the same at home. He lived in an extremely nice home. But even there, he couldn't help having those little accidents. For instance, one morning when Mr. Bump was outside his house, he noticed that the chimney pot had come loose in a storm the night before. I must fix that before it comes off, thought Mr. Bump to himself, and he hurried to his garden shed to get a ladder. It was a very long ladder. <sighs> Mr. Bumped walked up the garden path with the ladder on his shoulder. He turned the corner of the garden path and crash went the living room window. Oh no. Oh dear, thought Mr. Bump. And he turned to see what had happened. Crash went the kitchen window behind him. Oh dear, thought Mr. Bump again. And he rested the ladder against the wall of the house so that he could climb up on the roof to fix the chimney. Crash! went the bedroom window. So you can see how Mr Bump had his little accidents. Mr Bump had had many jobs, but somehow they never seemed to last very long. As soon as anything got lost, or broken, or splintered, or chipped, or snapped, or cracked, or torn, or burst, or wood wrenched, or crunched, or split, or slit, Mr. Bump got the blame. For instance, when Mr. Bump was a bus driver, he fell off the bus and couldn't catch up with it again, and all the passengers travelled without having to pay. For instance, when Mr. Bump was a carpenter, he found that when he was hammering nails, he hammered his thumb most of the time and the nail hardly at all. In order to recover from this series of rather unfortunate happenings, Mr. Bump decided to take a vacation. There he could think about what sort of job he could do where he wouldn't be such a nuisance to everyone. So he set off to the seaside to catch, to set off to the station, that is, to catch the train to the seaside. Have you ever caught a train? While Mr. Bump was on vacation, several things happened. For instance, he fell off a boat into the sea and the lifeboat had to come and rescue him. For instance, one day when he was quietly walking along the beach, minding his own business, he got his foot stuck in a bucket, and as he couldn't get it off, he had to walk around with it on his foot for hours. That's very silly, doesn't he? For instance, another time when he was walking along the beach, he walked straight into a large hole that somebody had dug. And he had to stay there all night because he couldn't climb out on his own. However, despite all these little accidents, Mr. Bump enjoyed his vacation. And while he was there, he had a splendid idea about what sort of job he should do. It was quite the best idea Mr. Bump had ever had. An absolutely splendid idea. And now, Mr. Bump worked happily for Mr. Barley, the farmer. Mr. Barley has a rather large apple orchard on his farm, and that's where Mr. Bump works. Mr. Bump's job is picking apples. <laughs>
but he doesn't use a ladder to climb up the tree to pick the apples like other apple wood prickers. Oh no, Mr. Bump has a much better way of picking apples than that. He just walks around. And before long, Mr. Bump, being Mr. Bump, walks into a tree. Bump! And down falls an apple and Mr. Bump catches it. This makes the job of apple picking much easier and Mr. Bump is very pleased about his new job and Mr. Barley is very pleased about his new apple picker. So you see, the story of Mr. Bump isn't such a sad story after all. And if you ever bump yourself, you know what to do, don't you? Go and eat an apple picked by Mr. Bump and then you won't feel your bump at all. You'll remember that the next time you have a bump, won't you? Good. Thanks for listening.